the, the difficulty is many companies are not as open and honest as they maybe claim to be. Uh, yeah. they, they may claim out in news briefs that they're transparent, but when you look mm-hmm. inside, they're really not. Hi, welcome to Over 50 TV. My name is Lou Reyes. And today, once again, I am sitting with Jorick McLean. Now, Jorick is an HR expert. He's got over 20 years experience in HR. And Jorick was also, also the former HR manager for the Phoenix Suns. You've probably seen Jorick on our, on our program before, and I want to welcome him back today to help you to answer some important HR questions. And, and welcome to our show, Jorick. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm great to be back, and I hope I'm uh, providing some value and some good insight for people uh, watching your show. Well, Jorick, you definitely are, and like I mentioned uh, in this opening here, you know, I can tell by the questions that we receive from viewers who've watched the previous videos that you've uh, that you've done with us that they people are feeling and believe they're getting a lot of value. And what I'd like to talk about today, a person who's interviewing for a job, what are some of the red flags that they should watch out for? All right, so one of the main ones that comes up is if someone's asking you questions that doesn't have anything to do with the job that you have applied for. If the person is asking you questions that they're going, okay, I came here because I have a marketing job that I applied for and you're asking me operation job uh, questions or sales questions. Yeah, and yeah. what I would do is if you're getting questions that are just not what you feel like you normally get asked during interviews that you have had for this role or past roles, I would gently turn it around on the recruiter, the hiring manager, whoever's asking you the questions and just say, okay, answer the question shortly uh, if they have a sales question. Okay, Mm -hmm. you're asking a sales question. I'm here for marketing. I just want to make sure I'm here for this marketing position. This is the job posting that I applied to uh, and I sent my resume in for. This is the role, correct? This isn't a sales role. And just to make sure that the person interviewing well, does have the right person, is uh, got the right thing on their calendar. So they're yeah. asking about a marketing job versus a sales versus operations versus HR. Some of that could just be, gosh, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed it. I, I, I Let me go get the right questions. But it could be a lack of focus uh, on behalf of the interview person. It sure. could also be they're doing a courtesy interview and you don't mm-hmm. know it but they're asking just these general questions that you're going, okay, I've been through interviews. And if you're over 50, you've been through maybe many interviews. You kind of know the tone and feel and you're going, okay, I feel like I'm just getting jockeyed around here a little bit. I would ask, uh, I wouldn't necessarily ask that, but I would say these aren't in line with the job I applied for. Um, Do you have questions that involve the job I applied for? If they keep asking general questions, then Mm -hmm. You might politely want to end the interview uh, mm-hmm. and move on, uh, but that is something that people oftentimes will think, well, gosh, the, the, the interviewer is just being cute or trying to at, ask a, a weird question uh, just to try to see maybe if I'm paying attention or my level of engagement. More often than not, it's, it's not to try to have you jump through hoops. It's more they're not prepared or they're just going through the motions because it's a courtesy interview. Yeah, and I think that would be very frustrating and even even I'll go so far as saying hurtful um, when you are counting on getting a position or or, or looking to land a job and then it's a courtesy interview and and how frustrating would that be? Yeah, because it's something I've I've been given courtesy interviews and the only reason I knew that is afterwards. So, oh God, I didn't get the job. And then I think about the questions going, oh, those were some weird questions. And then <laughs> someone came out a couple of weeks later and said, yeah, we just, we gave you a courtesy interview. I'm going, okay, well, that was a waste of everyone's time. It would have been nice for you to say, okay, you're not qualified or we're not going to talk to you. I would have preferred that and saved everyone an hour of time, actually more time preparing for the interview on my side, yeah. plus the interview side. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, it just would be frustrated frustrating. So what are some of the, the, I guess we'll just say illegal questions that, that HR should not be asking. Can you kind of give us some uh, behind the curtains kind of, kind of uh, stuff? Yeah. They're the basic ones that I will say this specific to the audience. Uh 
earlier in the career of people that are over 50, you may have been asked some of these questions. They may not have been illegal. Most were, but you didn't realize that. Uh, yeah. Things like, are you married? Do you have kids? Uh, some people, and these are cues that were picked maybe 20, 30 years ago. Someone sees a wedding event. Oh, you're married. Or hey, ask a question about the spouse or your family. Are you going to have a family? Or uh, this would be geared towards females. Are you looking to have kids? That's an open question that many people may not think is, well, that's not a problem. Well, no, I'm not thinking about it. Yes, it's a discriminatory question because it's a way for the employer to try to weed out, well, whether you're going to be having kids, time off, vacation, FMLA, uh, yeah. disability, those things. Those are things people still ask, and it comes up in legal briefs and uh, mm -hmm. ends up on TV shows, asking questions about religion, asking questions about politics, things like that. You just shouldn't. Politics, oddly enough, there isn't a protected class for of politics, but asking about religion, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, absolutely not. Uh, asking about particular backgrounds, so uh, looking at someone and ask, uh, making a judgment about their their race or their history, uh, when it comes to uh, to that, big no nos. Oddly enough, they still get asked, and the reason I know that is because they end up on documentaries and TV shows and yeah, legal yeah. briefs of, and you can't believe in 2021 someone is still asking these questions, but someone out there still is. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's interesting because all I think about they're doing is just trying to basically weed you out. It seems to me, anyway. That, that's exactly what the, the process is. Is oftentimes, depending on who is recruiting, who the hiring manager is, and what the mm -hmm. directive they've been given. Yeah, it's as much weeding out as it is looking for the right candidate. And sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, I hate to say this, there are people that are looking for reasons not to hire you versus looking for reasons to hire you. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and it's just, as we just said a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes ago, it's really a waste of both the HR manager's time and it's a waste a waste of, of your time. So right. when it comes to illegal questions, so what do you, what do you say though? Um, I just want to be clear on this. Like if somebody asked me a question that I know they shouldn't be asking, should I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I need to tell you, you shouldn't be asking, or should I just say, kind of not answer that question? Well, maybe both of kind of a combination. You could either say, uh, that's not a question that I'm going to answer. Or, that's mm -hmm. not a question that you should be asking. And yeah. you should feel comfortable enough, especially someone that's older. Maybe mm -hmm. someone that's younger may feel pressured to answer. Someone that's yeah. older you can't answer, ask that question, uh, and, or you shouldn't be. And you can do that politely, uh, mm -hmm. but that, again, that has no bearing on the job. Well, I think what you could do too is maybe just say, you know, I'm not, depending on the question, is that I'm really not prepared to answer it. I mean, I think when you're older, Absolutely. when you're over 50, I mean, and, and, and maybe because you've been looking for a job or, or job hunting for six months or a year or more, you know, you're more willing, you, you feel you need to accept that question being answered and then you feel you need to respond, but it's probably not the way to go. It's a, it's a representation, a microcosm of what you're going to be walking into on day one. As yeah. the interview process is, this is the, the dance that we do. It's very much like dating um, or a sales pitch that you mm -hmm. really have to be careful. And as you, in the, the, interviewee role when you're being mm -hmm. interviewed you should be interviewing the company as much as they are you and those little mm -hmm. things somebody asking that question that means that an hr person isn't doing their job training either the hr person isn't trained or they're not training the hiring manager or the recruiter to make sure that they're yeah. not asking those types of questions and that's a, that's one that and again it still happens it blows my mind but that yeah. also gives you a glimpse on what might be going on in the company because if something like that a blatant thing that they shouldn't be doing in an interview is yeah. acceptable what else is going on that's an excellent excellent point and i agree with you 100 percent. and I, I can see how that could have implications in other parts of the job so here's a question for you when you are the interviewee and you're sitting there and you ask a question of the hr manager and their response is kind of fuzzy it's unclear what do you do uh, 
the I wish I could say that the hair sticks up on my head. It doesn't anymore, <laughs> uh, not even on the back of my neck. But I start questioning, what am I doing here? Yeah. Because th that person should have a whole list of questions that could get asked everywhere from an entry level employee to a senior level mm -hmm. C-suite person that's going to be asking thousands of potential questions. They should all have good, solid answers for them. Once in a blue moon that you may come up with a question that's so out there that they may have a hard time answering, but that's yeah. a simple, okay, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to get back to you. I'll call you or I'll email you with the answer. That's a clear and concise answer. But those of, you know, Lou, I'm just, you know, um, I'm not sure, or I'm, they start dawdling with the answer. Yeah. That's something where you go, okay, I, I, I need to think about something else. And again, even if it's your dream job, and especially if you've been interviewing for a long time and you just want to get the yes, you just want to get the offer. That's when you really have to push back and go, okay, wait a second. Again, this is a microcosm of what I'm going to be dealing with on day to day. Yeah, yeah, Fuzzy yeah. and vague answers as opposed to clear and concise. I prefer clear and concise in my life as opposed to fuzzy and vague. I, I totally agree. I've got one more for you that I think is kind of important. And, and this is something that, that I wonder if, if a, to me, a red flag would be if I'm sitting with you, I'm the interviewee, and I, I say, you know, Jordan, I know we're talking about salary now. Um, I'm wondering if you would consider increasing your offer. And what if they flat out say, no, this is it. That's what this is what we offer. And this is what's on the table. What do you do? So depending on your personality, yeah. one and two, <laughs> may, I point. would say level of desperation. And, and I, I mean that in the, the best possible way. If you've been interviewing a long time, and you just want some, if you're accepted, if you're okay with the offer, mm -hmm. take it. So that's yeah. easy. Yeah. But in this day and age, too many people are looking for work. Too many employers are looking for employees. And you got to keep in mind uh, the audience as you're listening, you have a lot of experience. And as much as you see things about you're getting downsized, right size, positively transitioned, and whatever word is for getting rid of you, yeah, you have a yeah. lot of experience to bring to the table. Don't sell yourself short. This is not the moment to do it. Ask for a higher wage. Ask for a higher salary. If they won't negotiate, mm -hmm. don't work there. Because again, think mm -hmm. about it as first impressions. How willing are they going to be to negotiate a raise or give you a raise or a bonus? And when you keep going, gosh, I've been working for two years. I haven't had an increase. I'm going to go talk to my boss about that. And they say, no, sorry, we hired you at this. You accepted. Well, they're, if they're not going to negotiate or be flexible on the front end, mm -hmm. there's very little reason to, to give an in in interview, in interviewee that there would be any reason that they would be flexible throughout the course of your job. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and that's an ex another excellent point, Jork, and I agree. You know, I, I do have one more question for you that I know that I've, I've looked at. Yeah. Turnover. The question that I want to ask anyone that I would be interviewing with, I want to ask the HR manager, what's your turnover rate and why is this position open? If they don't answer that or if the high turnover rate is high, to me, that's a red flag. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a great point that you bring up. Um, it is uh, probably general practice. I think you, everyone in any type of position should mm -hmm. ask, why is the position open? Mm -hmm. And hopefully you get the answer that somebody got promoted or somebody moved to a different position in the company, or maybe they moved to a different part of the, the world. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes you'll get the other person resigned or they're no longer with the organization. You should get a straight answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I really believe that the turnover, you can ask that question. It's a straightforward question to ask. Mm -hmm. Companies should be giving you some answer. I will say that please keep in mind that when they give you the answer, the good chances they might be embellishing of that in their favor, meaning they yeah. might have 30% turnover. Maybe they're going to say 20, or maybe they say 10% turnover, mm -hmm. but it's really 15 or 20. Uh, yeah. They're probably going to err in the side of that, but they should be answering that. And the thing is, if it's a major corporation, you might be able to find that information because it gets published in, in major publications. Sure. But oftentimes yeah. if it's medium to small companies, you're not going to know that. And unless you know somebody in the company that can give you some insight, you really, you got to rely on that answer and mm -hmm. hope that it's good. And then once you get the job though, I will say within the first 30, 60 days, as you're kind of getting your, your sea legs and your feet wet in the role, if you mm -hmm. see a lot of people leaving, that's your time to don't stay any longer and think it's going to be different for you. Get yeah. out. 
you know, it doesn't help yeah. at the interview process, but once you're in there, don't stay too long to where it's like, oh boy, get out and get back to interviewing. Yeah, it's funny what you said too, because um, the, the, the HR manager, if they want you, they could tell you anything that they want to tell you and you don't know. But once you're in there, as you say, for 30 days, well, something's become obvious. That's true. And, and the, the difficulty is many companies are not as open and honest as they maybe claim to be. Uh, yeah. they, they may claim out in news briefs that they're transparent, but when you look mm-hmm. inside, they're really not. And the difficulty is the, the whole process of being interviewed is kind of a dating. And with that, it becomes uh, interesting because on the first date is maybe different than the 10th date or the 50th <laughs> date, as far as what you learn about somebody and what somebody yeah. finally lets out. And the difficulty is so oftentimes myself included, I've yeah. worked for companies I thought were fantastic. And when I got there, they were still good but not as fantastic as they were being sold. And I worked at another place that I was told was great. And I walked in and I'm going, wow, this is, this is not good. This is toxic from day one. Uh, where's the no desk? I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I can see that. And I've actually seen the same thing myself. Well, George, I, I want to thank you again for, for joining us here today. I, I, I mean, I just got to say, when I ask you these questions, I really do feel like I'm being taken behind the curtain and seeing what really goes on in HR. And I, I got, I, as I mentioned, I know our viewers are thinking and seeing the same thing. So thanks again for joining us. I appreciate it. I, I can't thank you enough for having me. Yeah.